know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. And friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. From our war room here in San Antonio, today. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just hey, honor the spirit of the Lord. The world coming live to you. We just honor the spirit of the Lord on this morning for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Listen to this, our Sunday morning worship gathering, and uh, we just magnify the spirit of the Lord. I'm just trying to uh, bring everyone in on this morning who uh, wants to partake of the blessing and the spirit of the lord i'm telling you we're in high worship here in the war room and uh we just thank the lord for his grace and his mercy his spirit on this morning certainly to our master the lord jesus and to our precious holy ghost whom we just serve daily and the worship has been high in the war room uh we're alive and well the grace and mercy of the lord his compassions have not failed us because the word of the lord in lamentation says they are new every morning therefore as the body of christ we can say great is his faithfulness and i don't know about you but i'm in the firepower of the holy ghost i am ready as a vessel of honor to be used of the lord this morning the holy ghost is going to speak to every one of us on this morning morning severally as he wills and he is going to touch every heart and every mind and um and we just magnify the spirit of the lord our first lady is away uh this morning uh for uh uh on assignment and so we just thank the lord um for her and we love her on this morning and um and we just praise the Lord for her safe return. And so just solicit your prayers for her. And listen, I'm telling you, I am, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in the body of Christ. I'm excited about what I see across the world. And um, we just honor and magnify the spirit of the Lord for all of you. And uh, if there's any amount of time you can worship with us on this morning, we just thank the Lord uh, at the outset for all of you. We're going to open in prayer. We have a scripture of worship that we are going to get into and if you want to get ahead grab first corinthians the fourth chapter and um, we're just going to read two verses there our scripture worship to set the premise in our mind of where the holy ghost is going to take us this morning i'm telling you we're just going to have a fireside chat one of the beauties there's a beauty of being in the sanctuary and uh absolutely and um wherever two or three are gathered together in the lord's name he says i'm there in the midst of you and i thank the lord for social media i never thought there'd be a time where you could just come on a platform like this and literally reach the world but it shows the intentional uh, uh, prophetic spirit of the Lord uh, that he intends that this gospel go to every ethnicity on the planet and that's not a uh, you know uh, a, a uh, claim for not assembling together physically obviously I love to come into the congregation of the righteous and come into the presence of the Lord but we are going as the Lord has commanded us and led us I've been walking with the Lord for uh, 30 plus years now and preaching the gospel for the same amount of time when the Lord called me he put me right into action put me right to work and so we bless the Lord for his grace his mercy and his mind because he is perfect in wisdom perfect in knowledge perfect in understanding and he's so laconically perfect so clearly perfect that the scripture says his wisdom is past finding out there is no searching the word of the Lord says of his understanding and so we just magnify the presence of the Lord on this one I'm telling you we're in high worship we just welcome all of you into the war room shortly here we're going to be going into the Holford Park here as the Spirit of the Lord is directing us 
uh, at the 1st of April. Uh, we'll be going into the park. Pastor Titus, we salute you, sir, all the way from Kenya, Africa. We just thank the Lord for you on this morning and uh, had a chance to uh, uh, be in worship with them this morning and view the service and Pastor Titus, as always, ministering before the Lord in the Holy Ghost and in strength and in power. So, Pastor Titus, we thank the Lord for you. Many of our pastors out in Kenya, Africa, Pakistan, and many parts of the world um, that fellowship with us. Listen, Saturday mornings, Saturday mornings, I need to say this, Saturday mornings, um, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time would be 12 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 9 a.m. Um, uh, Pacific Standard Time. We are in our IPBS, our International Prophetic Bible Study. Listen, and we are talking about end time doctrines. The Holy Ghost is ministering to us concerning the last things, end time doctrines, the end time church. In theology, we say a scatological doctrine. He is talking. The Holy Ghost is, is, is ministering to our hearts, preparing us as the end time church. Um especially its leaders. We have many leaders that are in session with us and we are coming together as the fivefold ministry, walking together in the presence and power and in the spirit of the Lord. And so we just magnify the Lord for his grace on the IPBS. We invite all of you, um, if you have any amount of time to spend with us, we invite you on Saturday mornings. Um, and we have pastors from Kenya, Pakistan, East Africa, all over that are coming in. The Lord is drawing more and more and more. If you're a part of the IPBS, please invite someone, especially new believers, because they need this doctrine. You know, I'm seeing the Lord is really touching the hearts of our young generations all over and they are going before the Lord and they are ministering okay because the Lord is preparing the body of Christ as the bride of Christ to meet the bridegroom and that's what he's sending his leaders to do and this IPBS is a part of preparing the bride to meet the bridegroom if you haven't already <clears throat> viewed um, uh, the message a cry for the bride of Christ uh, we were in session with Prophet Dyshawn Gordon out of North Carolina. You want to go and view that. Go on our YouTube page. Just type my name in, Bishop Dr. Guy uh, Cox, and it will Guy A. Cox, and it will come right up. And um, if you are not on our Facebook ministry page, please go and follow. Uh, just type in at Bishop um, Guy A. Cox. It comes right up. Matter of fact, Instagram. Uh, we're on TikTok same thing just type my name in and it comes right up you can go to our website www uh, bishop um, ga cox dot com and um, just type my name in I, I come up on all these platforms um, my name is rare so you don't have to fight with anything uh, type it in these platforms are completely free the Spirit of the Lord there are many that are charging when you're on YouTube now subscription you can't get the Word of the Lord their content they're trying to make money um, I'm gonna leave that to the Lord but I'm gonna say this and I don't have a problem with the preachers uh, per se making money if it's in the correct context because there is an incorrect context and then a correct context but the Spirit of the Lord has directed me to leave the Word of the Lord as he gave it to me freely you have received son free give so you're not paying for anything when you go on YouTube just ask that you hit the subscribe button and ask that you hit uh, and that you turn your notifications on so every time a message comes up there are 183 messages on there for you and absolutely free um, three over three years of preaching now worth of messages on there for you there and they're highly they're of high prophetic import we even have a message on there to the four kings of Africa you want to go and view that and so we just honor the spirit of the lord on this morning again the ipbs saturday mornings if you want extra word if you want highly prophetic words you want to know um what is going on in the end time church you want to be in that session go on our facebook ministry page if you connect with me uh on facebook and if you send me a a, a invitation i will connect with you so that I can send you a personal invitation on Messenger. However, if you go on the Facebook ministry page and you just find, you'll see where it says the International Prophetic Bible Study. 
and it'll have um, the IPBS logo on there and you'll see the date for the following Saturday so this this next one is going to be March 25th I already have it posted for you if you go in there there's a live link you go through the live link and guess what you're right in session with us just wait to the time I have all the times listed on the invitation for your part of the world if I do not um, just message me let me know I will research it and I will put it up there Philippines we have Saints in the Philippines you're 14 hours ahead so you're gonna be on Sunday morning about 1 a.m. I know that that's gonna be super early um, but I'm up at that time uh, most of the time uh, in prayer so if you're up at that time in the Philippines join with us we love to have you the floor is open to everyone if you have a comment I love to hear the wisdom of the leaders and so I open the floor and I share the floor with their questions we're fielding questions it doesn't matter we tr we like to keep the questions to end time doctrine but if you have something and it's just burning in your heart we will take I'm a pastor I'll take the time to answer the questions uh, uh, that are not necessary in that area so we just magnify the spirit of the Lord for you listen we're going into the word of the Lord this morning I don't know about you but I'm excited grab your coffee grab your water the beauty of being in on this broadcast and being in session is that we can be just a little informal grab Grab your coffee, grab your water. The Holy Ghost just going to have a fireside chat with us. Again, we're going to open in prayer and we just magnify the Spirit of the Lord as you're coming on. Um, we just honor your presence, all the leaders from around the world. We honor you. I just want to say that at the outset because once we get going, uh, I don't. I don't too much pay attention to the comments, although I have them right up here on the board. Listen, uh, the the first lady bought me a, a a cup out of Africa, and I just love this cup. I've been showing everybody, I showed them in the IPBS yesterday, but I love this part right here. The revolution will be brewed, and I'm telling you right now, for me, it's coffee and Jesus. I'm telling him in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and I'm excited about the word of the Lord this morning. Let's open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just magnify and we honor your presence in the war room on this morning your presence throughout the entire world you are ubiquitous you are omnipresent there is no place where your presence your power your spirit your kingdom your dominion and your might does not rule with absolute sovereignty and authority and so as we stand in your presence we recognize the great privilege and honor as your children to serve you your word says that if a man or a woman does not have your spirit they are none of yours that doesn't apply to the body of Christ this morning because you have indwelt each and every one of us in the body of Christ every member there are no big eyes and little use you've indwelt every member by your spirit so that as we walk with you we have the one who is our master teacher our comforter and our guide to lead and to guide us into all truth and this is the purpose we have come into the war room this morning into fellowship with our precious Holy Ghost into fellowship with your spirit father into fellowship with the holy angels and the general assembly and church of the firstborn in heaven that are crying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world worthy to open and loose the seals of judgment to bring the world into order and into redemption father we're not waiting on you this we're not waiting you out on this morning we are waiting on you and you said we're two or three are gathered together in your name there you are in the midst of us and so we honor your presence on this morning as your children father if we've done anything that was amiss in your eyesight we ask that you forgive us in the blood of the lamb that you wash us and consecrate us and you regen as you regen have already regenerated our hearts and you continue to perform that work in us to the day of Jesus Christ and per saint, uh, progressive sanctification father we magnify you on this morning that we stand cleansed and washed for your word says be ye holy for I the Lord your God am holy and so we stand in holiness not any holiness or righteousness of our own we have none but we seek ye first your kingdom and your righteousness and we thank you on this morning to stand holy in your presence holy because your holiness is in us by your spirit sealing us unto the day of redemption Somebody needs to know that. <clears throat> on this morning father somebody needs to know that you're with them on this morning somebody needs to know that you're still on the throne your word says that your perfect love cast out fear that you have not given us the spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind there's no reason for us to fear because you've already given us your word and your word is forever settled in heaven meaning heaven has already seen everything play out it is 
already settled there. It is already done there. And in the earth, you promised you would do nothing until you first reveal your secret to your servants, the prophets. And so, Father, we stand before you as vessels of honor. Speak through us. Speak through our very vessel. You desire to use us, Father. We were too ignorant to know to be used of you. But you came to us, and you washed us, and you cleansed us, and you saved us and placed your precious Holy Ghost in us so that you could use us to cry loud and spare not, to lift up our voice like a trumpet and to show uh, uh, the United States of America its transgressions and the nation of the world, their sin, Father, to call them to redemption. Somebody needs to know that there's salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. For your word says that there's no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. But it is at the name of Jesus that every demon in hell including Satan himself, fears and trembles. It is at the name of Jesus that deliverance and healing and power and glory, dominion and might take place not only in the universe, but in the universe of our souls, in the universe of our spirits, because we're created in your image and your likeness. And apart from you, we can do nothing. We are nothing. We sense nothing. We feel nothing. We see nothing. We hear nothing. We absolutely can do nothing without you. And so, Father, we're calling men to repentance at this time and to salvation in your name for there is no other name whereby men can be saved every other god is dead and false and every other religion is dead and false and a seducing spirit and a doctrine of the devil and so father we thank you we bless you on this morning we give you honor we give you glory we give you praise there's none like you in all the heavens and all the earth and whereby we worship you and worship you alone because you alone are the god of salvation according to your word and there is no other Savior beside thee. And so, Father, we magnify you on this morning. We give you honor and glory. Speak to us now by your precious Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, throw your weight around in the service this morning. Have your way. Do what only you can do. We worship you in the beauty of holiness on this morning. And we thank you and we love you, Father. In King Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, saints, I'm telling you, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and, 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 and the old saints used to sing, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Now, I'm going I'm to say the same thing this morning. I don't know what you came to do, but I know that I've come to praise the Lord. Go with me to 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We're going to jump right in here. We're already 16 minutes into the broadcast, not that I'm counting, because I'm going to be here to the Holy Ghost give me rest. I want us to forensically pay attention to what's being said here, and we're going to get the consent concern as we transfer as we uh, traverse through the scripture this morning first Corinthians the fourth chapter the 14th verse and we've been in Corinthians uh, I didn't even realize until I was communing with the Holy Ghost this week a lot we've spent a lot of time in our Sunday morning worship gatherings uh, coming in out of first and second Corinthians and the Holy Ghost has absolutely attended this I personally have not been studying in these places in my personal time the Holy Ghost has had me other places but I praise the Lord that uh, in his infinite wisdom, um, he has taken uh, me into this place uh, to minister to all of us. And so I, I just obey and I'm, and I'm diligent in my obedience to just hear the Holy Ghost because I don't know about you. I don't come to church and I told the IPBS this yesterday. I don't come to church to see anybody. It's wonderful to see everybody. But when I come into the house of the Lord, I come to see, I come to hear the spirit of the Lord. I come to see my king and my father in heaven. I come to be in the presence of the Lord to understand and to receive the revelation of his heart and his mind. So as I go through my week, especially if I meet the enemy along the way, now we're not ignorant of his devices. We don't, he walks about as a roaring light. We don't fear him. We're not concerned about him because the Lord's given us power over all his forces. And not only do I believe that I know it and I execute it. So I'm not concerned about him, but should I meet him, I'm armed with the word. I'm armed with faith. I'm armed with the helmet of salvation. I'm armed with the spirit of the Lord and he lifts up a standard against the enemy somebody needs to understand this on this morning and I know that's why the Holy Ghost is speaking it through me right now I'm not I'm not talking to you right now the Lord is speaking through me and using my vessel and I'm just allowing him this is not prescripted I don't preach with notes the Holy Ghost I just let him speak right through me it, it is instantaneous we've been doing this for 30 years the Holy Ghost taught me at 18 years old how to hear him how to hear his spirit how to 
know the difference between his voice, my father in heaven's voice, and his son's voice, and to know the difference but when a demonic spirit is talking to me or when an angelic spirit's talking to me. And it's not a thing to understand when a human spirit's talking to you, but it is a thing to understand when that human spirit is amalgamated with the Holy Ghost or amalgamated with another sp spirit. Put a forensic and a mental pin on that because we are going to dive deeper into that this morning as we we're going to penetrate that deeper this morning as we uh, are in the presence of the Lord. 1 Corinthians the 4th chapter and the 14th verse, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Put, them, put a mental pen on that. I would underline that. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though I'm a student of the word, that's why you hear me say underline. I don't count that as a desecration of the word of God, because obviously we do it in a neat fashion. And um, uh, But I, I, I don't want to uh, be offensive to anyone in this right. Um, and and so if, if that offends you, uh, you know, um, uh, and yet I, I, I have, you know, it does not offend me and um, because I've been preaching the word of the Lord a long time. So you'll hear me say that. Don't let it bother you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you, verse 15, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, please hear the word of the Lord here carefully. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Gospel. The first thing I want to say as a side note is this right this scripture right here kind of throws down this whole thing I hear a lot of people uh, saying this that you know We should call no man father upon the earth the Lord Jesus wasn't even referring to that and this scripture by the Apostle Paul Shows that fact when the Lord Jesus was talking about call no man father upon the earth as the scripture showed that Islam would come It also shows that Catholicism would come and we have to understand, there are many things in the scriptures that show us that the Lord Jesus showed us and he was warning us. And the reason he said, call no man father upon the earth is because he is the Lord of glory. He has already seen the timeline, the historical timeline of man play out. He's already seen the beast and the and the false prophet. He's already seen that Satan, the dragon would enter the beast so that he would be the second man, only the second man recorded in scripture to be referred to as the son of perdition, which is a theological symbol denoting that Satan himself, not one of his imps or one of his forces, entered the heart of Judas, that's actually plainly written in scripture, and also would enter the heart of the Antichrist, which is also plainly written in scripture. So both of these men are referred to as the sons of perdition. I'm, a, I'm an extreme teacher in the word of the Lord and a master teacher, and so I just want to, to, to say that, especially for my new believers and, and my new students in the word of the Lord, and so <clears throat> the Lord Jesus is and this was not an indictment of having fathers upon the earth. Obviously, we have natural fathers. Um, Jesus referred to his heavenly father as father. And uh, also, uh, Joseph standing in the position of an earthly father, not per se biologically, and I do understand that well, because I have several children that are not biologically my own. I have father children and raised them up that are not my own, so I understand the it made me no less father to them than the children that are biologically mine, because a father is one that is going to be present. I know sometimes we say it two different ways. Uh, you could be a dad and not a father, and then some say a father and not a dad. It's okay either way you say it because the principle is the same and a lot of times we misunderstand a lot of things because we're looking at the we're looking at the external shell of the expression rather than looking at the essential nature but many things if you look at the essential nature they are bound by principle together and so whether you say it either way the principle is it takes a great man to stand and be a father or a dad and to raise up children especially ones that are not your own and I've done that I've never made a distinction I only make the distinction now for clarification uh, for understanding, not even for clarification, because I've never made that difference. I've never referred to them as step or anything like that. I don't believe in in in, in step and all that stuff. Um, and so um, I understand this. And so. It's not an indictment against fatherhood by any means, against fathership. It's not an indictment. It's a, it, it, it was the Lord Jesus allowing us to understand the prophetic timeline that men would come along who would want, who would want to bear this title, who were working in the power of Satan that eventually in time across the historical timeline and the prophetic timeline would lead us to the Antichrist, but in specific to the false prophet who would cause all men on the earth who have received his mark to worship his image. He would establish the one world order of worshiping the Antichrist, worshiping 
the beast, thereby indirectly worshiping the dragon is what Satan has been going for in the historical timeline since day one. He just wants somebody to fall down and worship him so he can feel like he's God. And unfortunately, many are worshiping him right now through false religion and pseudo religion, false religion, whether it be pseudo or quasi, worshiping him through uh, different ideologies, whether it be new age or all the isms or all the, uh, you know, all, all this other stuff, uh, the isms and, 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 and the S's and all this other stuff, if you will, Taoism, Shin, Shintoism, Hinduism, Buddhism, on it, so on, it's Wiccanism, Guyanism, I mean, there's so many ism sisters now, and, you know, and, and coming through all of this other stuff, and, you know, he finds every way to just institutionally Satanize every culture, every ethnicity, every uh, nation, he just, him and his forces, they just find a way to try to Satanize everything, but the Lord has given the body of Christ's power over them, and that's why it's critical we open our mouth, uh, believers, because and we understand this, and my new believers, if you don't, now you're receiving the commandment and the, and the revelation of the Holy Ghost and the instruction to begin to open your mouth and cry loud and spare not. Share the Lord Jesus wherever you go, because in our mouths, uh, because we're indwelt by the Holy Ghost, when our words, when they come forth, they, they act in two measures. One, to bring the offensive nature of the gospel, that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost will come on the scene and they also act as a restraining force to evil in the world. The more we want evil to be restrained in the world, believers, the more we have to open our mouths. The more we want to see evil in there, all you have to do is keep your mouth shut and evil will overtake your society and your culture. It is because the majority of the pulpits of America stop thundering that America has been taken over been taken over by spirits that are ancient because demons are eternal and they don't die in the fleshly physical sense. So they've been around forever, even before man's history because Satan was the covering cherub according to Isaiah the 14th chapter and Ezekiel the 28th chapter homework this week if you're not understanding new believers and uh, all you new believers if there's any questions anything you have you want to study in the word just message me we can get in the word not not a big deal 30 years been doing this and counting and the Lord will give me uh, uh, by his grace and mercy and tearing in the rapture he will give me many more decades uh, to minister the word of the Lord to new generations and so we just magnify the spirit of the Lord. So we, the premise in the mind this morning is to understand fathership. Now you say, Bishop, why is that? Go with me. And we're going to go to second Corinthians. Now the 11th chapter, second Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the Holy ghost is going to lay out for us this morning. Uh, what we, what, uh, uh, his concern is for the body of Christ. And this message is primarily to the body of Christ, but let me explain to warn us and to teach us so that we can be armed and ready for what is is uh, clearly already here in America and we are ministering to other parts of the world to allow them to understand so their eyes are open and they can see that what is happening to America if you're not careful and your pulpit stop thundering it will come right to your nation and you will begin to see the same thing in your nation that we're seeing here. There are many evil things that are going on in the United States of America that are going to begin to appear in other parts of the world if they're not already there. And uh, especially on the African continent. And so if you haven't viewed our message to four kings of Africa, a message to the four kings of Africa, you want to go and view that. It's not as you suppose. Uh, but uh, at the same time, um, you will be pleasantly surprised uh, in the prophetic utterance there. So we, we invite you to go and, and and view that video uh, so that you can understand. And it doesn't just apply to Africa. It applies to many parts of the world. If you're not already experiencing this, uh, you will be if your pulpit stop thundering. And that is the warning and that is the resource of America. That is what the prophets need to be concerned with and crying out and telling uh, many others. Might I say this uh, as a very powerful side note, many are wasting their time arguing with each other, uh, especially in this apostate church, and I make the separation and distinction because the scripture does. The apostate church is not to be confused with the body of Christ. We have no part in that foolishness. That's why many of you are confused. How can these people... Now, we're not talking about the fact the church is a hospital, which the Holy Ghost spoke to us in the IPBS on yesterday. The 
church is a hospital, so I don't know why we're going there expecting to find clear-headedness. And, and listen, there are saints in the house who have been cleansed and washed and whose minds have been stabilized. And when you go there, but we should go there seeking the Lord, okay? Because even those of us whose minds are stable and stayed on the Lord and we're kept in perfect peace, listen, we are not perfect. Now, we are walking with the Lord. We'll pray with you and we will uh, uh, study the scriptures with you and we will teach and we will preach and we will do everything in our power by the Holy Ghost to edify. But the reality is we need the Holy Ghost ourselves. We need the Lord Jesus ourselves. We're still in progressive sanctification. We could still make a mistake. Not that we make it, wake up to sin or to make a mistake, but we still can. Now, won't, the longer you walk with the Lord, it won't be uh, as egregious as it was in days one. And many things will drop out of your spirit, uh, 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 unlike uh, in the earlier days of your salvation. And so that's great hope for my new believers. But understanding that most of the folks inside of most churches, you know, they are they are spiritually sick and in sin. And so when you go in there, you have to be armed in the church. See, we go in there and you say that should be the one place that you can let your hair down in the Holy Ghost. The one place you should let your hair down is in the secret place of the Most High, which you can enter sitting right before 10,000 people. You could sit, you could enter the secret place of the Most High sitting in your car, sitting on your job, sitting there with somebody talking to you right in your face. I do it all the time so I could receive what the Holy Ghost wants to give people as we're in counseling session because I'm a pastor that counsels. Okay? And so we need to understand that. When you go into the church, however, you are going into the presence of the Lord to receive from Him. You're not going into the presence of the pastor, the presence of the people. And so if you go in there with this mindset, that will get rid of church hurt. Church hurt is there because you have a concern. Anything you don't have a concern for cannot touch you because you're armed with the shield of faith you have on the whole armor of the Lord. Well, you need to have that armor on at all times. You don't go in the church and take the armor off, but that's what's happening. That's why many people, I, I never even heard the church, term church hurt until we got to this more modernized church. In the old church, I never even heard that term. Now, that's not to say there wasn't issues, there wasn't disagreements. There's issues and disagreement in the first century church between the Apostle Paul and, and the Apostle Barnabas, these great apostles. But the reality is, the reality is, after a while, that Holy Ghost worked that out. It's not to say we're going to agree upon everything, but when we can't put it before the Holy Ghost and let him just, uh, 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 serve between us and, and, and rule between us and cause us to come into his presence and, and receive the mind of Christ, concerning our brothers and issues uh, our brothers and sisters and that's not an issue of our brother and sister that's an issue of us not wanting to obey the Holy Ghost and we have to work that out with him all right so we got a sunny day here in Dallas Texas and uh, we're at about 1108 right now uh, we normally start service at 1030 unless there's some type of delay but most of the time there is not first second Corinthians 11 chapter it says would to God verse 1 ye could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed uh, bear with me and so he's speaking satirically now this is not literal or actual he is theorizing here from a satirical point of view to to cause us to understand what the Holy Ghost uh, is is conveying uh, to the church at Corinth and also as we read it to the to the to the modern church for I am jealous over you please hear the the language here forensically for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have espoused you to one husband this is why our worship scripture um, in 1 Corinthians is leading us to understand 1 Corinthians 4, 14 and 15, for those of you who may have missed it, I'm going to say it again for those that will view this broadcast later. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. All right, so we need to understand this morning, and that's why that was our worship scripture, speaking of fathership, because what the Apostle Paul, by revelation of the Holy Ghost, is conveying here is that the Father has espoused the body of Christ to his Son, okay, through the Apostle, and he's talking to the Gentile church now. I have espoused you to one husband. He's standing in the place of the Father. He's standing as a representative on the earth in the place of the Father. Okay? And so this is not Pope. This is not Viker. This is not all of that. That's a perversion of what he's talking about here. And he says, I've espoused you to one husband. 
okay? He says, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. He is really conveying the heart of the Father to the Corinthian church, okay? And he's conveying that same thing through the word of the Lord to the modern church. God has espoused us. The Father in heaven has espoused us by his servants to one husband, the Lord Jesus Christ, body of Christ. And why are you saying this, man of God? I'm saying this by revelation of the Holy Ghost because Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 tells us many are falling away. And revelation clearly states, and we can go into 1 Thessalonians clearly states, that there's an apostate church because in the last days, perilous times will come. The love of many will wax cold. Please hear the Holy Ghost on this morning. The love of many will wax cold. And so many's hearts are going to fail them for fear. They're going to begin to turn to other mechanisms to try to fill the voids that are simply being created by their disobedience and their disconnecting and their estrangement from the kingdom of God. So that estrangement is going to cause men, and it always does, whenever you become estranged from the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, whenever you become estranged from the Lord Jesus Christ, voids begin to set in, and then you begin to self-medicate, whether it's through religion, whether it's through substance abuse, whether it's through sex, whether it's through abuse, whether it's through violence, whether it's through some political ideology, uh, some perverted ideology, whatever the case may be. All of this stems from the real root root of the sickness and the problem, the radix of it, we say in Latin, is the fact that you are estranged from the Lord Jesus Christ. He, that's why in John the 15th chapter, he says, without me, you can do nothing. I am the true vine. That's the whole point of that message to the body of Christ and to the world, all generations. I am the true vine. Without me, he says, you can do nothing. So we must let the Holy Ghost graft us in. If you are not saved, Thank you, precious Holy Ghost. I will, sir. If you are not saved on this morning, you need to give your life to the Lord Jesus right now. Don't You don't have to pray a two-minute little prayer. Open your heart to the Lord Jesus right where you are. Begin to tell the Lord Jesus that you need him in your life as your personal Savior. Begin to pour out your heart to him. Begin to repent for all your sin, known and unknown. Tell the Lord Jesus you repent and ask him to come into your heart and he will do it. He's waiting on you. And then you ask him, to fill you with his precious Holy Ghost and he will do such. He will do such. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost, I, I have a strong unction to minister the Lord Jesus this morning. I'm telling you because our concern for this message this morning, let me give it to you by the presence and power of the Holy Ghost is preaching another Jesus. I'm going to read it in the scripture, but the Holy Ghost is telling me to give it to us right now. Preaching another Jesus. That's what we're going to be talking about and the Holy Ghost is going to be ministering to us for the next several weeks. Preaching Preaching another Jesus. You need the right Jesus. Okay? You need the real and true and living Lord Jesus Christ. He is not the Jesus Christ of Islam, who considers him a great prophet and teacher. He's not the Lord Jesus Christ of Judaism that's still waiting on the Messiah, even though he came. So I'm not saying that it's not, not the same Jesus in their scriptures. I'm saying in their mindset, they're waiting on the Lord Jesus and he's already come. Now, I'm not, I'm not referring to the fact that Jews cannot be saved because there are many saved and we and many serving and powerful uh, measures uh, like Amir Safadi and, and Prophet Jonathan Khan, so on and so forth, our Jewish brothers and sisters in the Holy Ghost. And their salvation has turned out to our riches because these men of God speak Hebrew. They know the Hebrew language. They know Hebrew culture. They know the Hebrew scriptures. And they are a tremendous blessing to us because of their position uh, in the kingdom before the Lord. And so we magnify the spirit of the Lord for our Jewish brothers and sisters. If you haven't already viewed the message, I have a message uh, up on YouTube entitled, My Heart is for Israel, preached some time ago. The dates are on there if you want to know when it's preached. And actually on YouTube, the dates are a little later. So all of those messages were preached a little earlier than the date state. And so we just magnify the spirit of the Lord. Listen, and we magnify the Lord for our Jewish brothers and sisters, all right? So the Lord, so we have to understand, you can receive the Lord Jesus right where you are. You don't have to wait to the conclusion of this broadcast. Receive the Lord Jesus right where you are, unbeliever, secular person, those that are outside the commonwealth of the faith, the general assembly and church of the firstborn here in the earth, the ecclesia. If you're outside, if the language I'm speaking sounds foreign to you, you're a candidate for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is calling you. I know the Holy Ghost is going across this broadcast right now, convicting all who will hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling you right now 
because the Holy Ghost is always in me and with me, and he is always ministering to everyone who will hear the sound of his true service. The reason I know I'm a true servant, because the Holy Ghost will go as you hear the word of the Lord and begin to change the dimensions of your life if you don't resist. And even if you do resist, he has a way of getting to you in spite of that. I know the gospel is offensive to many, but I'm not afraid of the gospel being offensive because the scripture tells us it will be to those who want to live apart from the word of the Lord and want to live in their manner and control their own lives. Put a mental pin on that. We're coming back to that. All right. And so I know it's offensive, but I also know in that offense, the conviction, the convicting power of the Holy Ghost shows up on the scene to convict hearts. And that's how you come into the kingdom. See, when we understand the process, we'll stop being afraid to preach the unadulterated word of the Lord, non-watered down, non-filtered, straight with no chaser. The reason many are shirking back from that is because you don't understand the process. You have no revelation of it. So go before the Holy Ghost, repent, let him switch the word in your mouth by giving you a revelation of how the process actually works. We don't save anybody. I'm going to go around that bin again for the heart of hearing. We don't save anybody. Body of Christ, especially evangelists, we don't save anybody. My veteran evangelists know this because I'm one of them. We don't save anybody, missionaries. We don't save anybody, preachers. Our job is to be ambassadors and to extend the invitation by the message. That's our job, to extend the invitation by the message. What the recipient does with it is between them and the Lord. Whether acceptation of salvation, rejection unto damnation, it is their decision. The Lord leaves it to them, and we ought to leave it to them. I'm telling you, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost this morning. Let's continue to read 2 Corinthians 11, chapter, and we are going to finish up uh, verse to it says that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We're talking fathership here. That's why we read 1 Corinthians the 4th chapter. Listen, verse 3, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled at Eve he's talking about Satan now in the Garden of Eden, through his subtlety this is how Satan's getting many right now through subtlety. The Satan doesn't come kicking the door down. He does it through subtlety Okay, I recently heard one of these rap artists uh, at his concert talking about, and I and I not that I watch these people. I saw it by a clip that one of my brothers in Christ was posting. But he's standing up there talking, telling the people who came to his concert must be tens of thousands of them. I don't know, I wasn't there, and I don't care. But what I do want to send as a warning is this man is standing up, there, standing up there, and he literally said out his mouth, "Check the record. You don't have to take my word for it. You can research everything I say." Okay, and so uh, I, I'm not afraid of it, and you can question call me out whatever the case is i'm not scared of nobody all right let me state that at the outset research please research everything i say especially in the scriptures okay now listen to me carefully here's this man saying we're talking about i don't see none of you flying up out of here of the rapture and satan is speaking to this man so all of you saying there's no rapture tell me how the devil knows there's one and you don't don't have time for that gotta go for the holy ghost not my assignment this morning. So he says, I don't see none of you being, none of you flying up out of here in the rapture. And so the fact you're here, you're going to hell with me now. He said, don't act like that. You done heard the music. You done heard it a billion times. You already know what time it is, right? And he said, but many of you weren't paying attention. Come on. He's telling you, you're going to hell with me. So he, he told them, my music is telling you where I am, where we're going, that we're already in the flame. And he said, he is telling, literally telling people this in the concert. And yet you guys keep listening to all these worldly people whose spirits is in the power of Satan. If you missed, we're going to put this IPBS up because we put all the broadcasts up. Get the one dated. You can go on our Facebook ministry page or YouTube platforms and get that. <clears throat> it's going to be dated. Uh, the 18th of March, go on there. We break this down. We break this down. We talk about uh, institutional Satanism in the end time church. We break it down. I also have another message called institutional Satanism already up on YouTube. Go and view that message. Many have already viewed that message. Okay, go and get the message. You need to get yours. You need to be an intelligent believer. We were talking in the IPBS yesterday, reading the scriptures about not being ignorant of Satan's devices. My team will have that up there shortly for you. When you see it come up, the IPBS dated 3-18-2023, you want to view that. 
Okay, you want to get that message uh, in your spirit if you were not already there, and many were. Listen to the Holy Ghost carefully. Verse 3, but I fear lest by any means the serpent beguiled it, as the serpent beguiled it, eat through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Whenever we move, what is he saying here? This is where we get, this is part, this is the foundation in, in, in spiritual terms of preaching another Jesus. This is when you get to preaching another Jesus. Now, he's not talking about preaching from a pulpit only. He's talking about saying out of your mouth um, as a believer or whatever the case may be. He is talking about the word that proceeds out of your mouth as an individual, saved or unsaved. Okay, especially the apostate church, because you say you're saved, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. So when he's referring to preaching another Jesus, which we're going to get to shortly in the next verse, this is how it begins, corrupting the word and moving away from it in a subtlety and a simplicity. The Satan gets you to do subtly. Uh, the subtlety of it is that he gets you to do. It's a slow backsliding. Is a slow process. The old saints used to teach us. It's a slow, pro gradual process, and Satan wants it that way so you don't realize what's happening to you until it's too late, and you bust hell wide open, and you're you're in the lake of fire for all of eternity. Bishop, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter if you believe it. The word of the Lord is stated. It's forever settled in heaven. You don't believe it. It doesn't matter. You're still going, and you're still going to find yourself there. Nobody's arguing about you believing it. I don't even argue that point. Bitch, I don't believe how you believe. You don't have to. You're still going to end up in the lake. I don't care that you don't believe like I do in that sense. I care in the sense that I want you to receive the Lord Jesus so you don't end up there. I'm not. A, I'm a preacher of righteousness, verity, and truth. I'm not trying to preach you into hell. I'm trying to preach you out of hell. And every shepherd worth his soul who's not a hireling or a wolf is going to preach you out of hell by telling you the realities of it, not by hiding it or not telling you or being afraid to tell you. Come on, preachers, get it down in your spirit so we can really help somebody understand what this is all about. This is why we preach the true and correct Jesus. Not as Islam, not as Buddhism, not as any of these other things. Because the moment you start thinking that you need to slide away from the simplicity in Christ, you're already backsliding. Come on and let's get it down in your spirit. I'm going to penetrate that deeper as we go along. Listen to me carefully. Uh... It says, verse 4, for he that cometh preacheth, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, there's our concern, preaching another Jesus, saints, mm -hmm, apostates, don't pay attention to them, unbelievers, pay attention to those that are truly preaching the Lord Jesus, whom we have not preached, preaching, for if he that cometh preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, whom who? the true apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ in every generation. Or if he receive another spirit, which he have not received, which is the Holy Ghost, or another gospel, which he have not accepted, you might well bear with him. We're really going to penetrate this deep in the next several weeks. So I hope you can be with us if you miss it, because I know many are in, in their own worship services in their place on the vineyard. Don't fret. We're going to have, we're going to, we always uh, record and we're recording now and we'll have these messages up for you. My team will make sure they're up there. Preaching another Jesus. Okay. Preaching another Jesus. This is a call to purity of faith. This is a call to purity of faith. This whole message, preaching another Jesus, the concern the Holy Ghost wants to get to the body of Christ, do not receive another Jesus. It happens gradually, subtly. You just start sliding back from the principles of the word of God. The Greek word apostasia, the English apostasy, is the sliding back from the principles of the word of God of the Spirit of God, of the Kingdom of God, sliding back from the principles of the Word of God, the Kingdom of God, the Spirit of God, and the love of God. When you forfeit the Kingdom, the Spirit, the power, when you forfeit the Word, you are already forfeiting the love of the Lord. Not because He doesn't want to love you, but, but, but because it's a two-way relationship, but because you don't want Him to love you. 
I'm so sick and tired of folks blaming stuff on the Lord. Look at yourself. The Lord is perfect. His word is perfect. He makes no mistakes. Whenever there's a problem in the relationship, it is always man. When there was a problem in heaven in the relationship, it was Satan and his one-third angels. It was not the Father and his angels. It was not the Son. It was not our precious Holy Ghost. It was him. And so it is with men. The problem in the garden wasn't with the Lord. He gave them commandment. The problem was Satan. The problem was men. The deathly amalgamation of humanism and Satanism, I call them. That, I call it, that was the problem. The Lord is not to blame. We are. But we can fix it by coming into the Lord Jesus and letting the Holy Ghost be our master teacher. Preaching another Jesus. Verse 4, underline it. Underline another spirit. Underline another gospel. Because this is what's instituted the apostate church. This is what's going to lead to the false prophet of the new world order. To the beast of the new world order. To the dragon operating in the beast. Satan himself in the antichrist in the new world order. Is this trifold measure right here. Preaching another Jesus. Receiving another spirit. Okay. Receiving another gospel. This is what's going to cause that. Trust me. I'm, pro I'm prophesying right now. According to the scriptures. This is what's going to cause it right here. This trifold measure. And it's already begun. We're already mixing our faith. Listen, this is a call to purity of faith. Go with me to James the first chapter. James the first chapter. James 1. Right after Hebrews. Uh, my name's Saints. James 1. James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. Verse 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue there, and he's talking about the word Lord now, theological symbol here. Perfect law of liberty, theological symbol, to denote the word of the Lord and the effect it has on the human spirit. That's why we have to preach it correctly and continue there. And he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This is Isaiah's, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all who can know it. Same principle. Okay, that's your Old Testament version. But to see that his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Don't let the word religion throw you. It's He's talking about systemic order and thinking in the word of the Lord. Not not the normal uh, uh, definition of religion. Words have different connotations. Let's stop getting stuck on one. But understand the principle of the word. And words have neither positive nor negative connotation until a human being, the one who is taking up the word, words are tools. Yes, they are spirit, but they are spirits that are tools. They can be used positively or negatively. You can use the same word, and a person can receive it positively or negatively, depending on the condition of their spirit or the condition of how you meant it. But the human being puts the positive or negative context to the word. Okay? And I, I'm not going to spell that out for us because we're intelligent. We already understand that principle. If any man, so then it says, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. Again, don't let the word religion throw you. He's talking about systemic thinking and order in the word of the Lord for your life. How you work out the word of the Lord in your life. That's the whole point of this passage. He says, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So what is he saying? To care about the things that the Lord cares about and to walk circumspectly. To not walk as the world with everything else. I'm our spirit. Shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right? Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, and here's where we're going, whatsoever things are we got a bunch of mixing of our faith. And let me explain this to us. When we begin to mix our faith, guess what? We're already in the realm of the anti-holy or the demonic. When we start mixing our faith, you've already entered the anti-holy realm or the realm of the demonic. Anti-holy, anti-Christ. You're in another spirit. If you have an anti-holy spirit, you cannot preach a holy Christ. This is why our living, not just morality, ethics, and spirituality. Bishop, why do you keep making that distinction? Because it's contradistinctive 
to the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of carnality, the King James uses the term flesh, but it is the spirit of carnality, creates another mindset in the person, already in the realm of the demonic. Once we start mixing our faith, okay, and, and when you look at the scripture, pay attention to this carefully. Notice it says another Jesus, another spirit, okay, another gospel. What is it pointing us to? That we have to consider the source. Because when you start mixing your faith, you have a different source, and there are only two. There are only two in the realm of the spirit, and in the spirit realm. Spirit realm meaning the, the realm of human spirits and demonic spirits. The realm of the spirit meaning the realm where the Lord dwells. The realm of the Holy Ghost. The realm of the spirit where we get dreams and visions. And, 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 and we receive the word of the Lord by revelation. And we receive the spirit of the Lord by revelation. That n another is a symbol of mixing. It's the theological symbol for mixing. When it says another, another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, another is the theological symbol for mixing. There is no uh, uh, another Jesus. There is no another spirit. There is no another gospel when it comes to the kingdom, when it comes to men, when it comes to demons. They absolutely got another spirit, another Jesus, and another gospel because Satan wants to take you to the lake of fire, unbeliever, apostate, so-called Christian. Come on, and I'm not saying that facetiously. I'm not against you. Again, I want to preach out of hell, not into it. But when you have another, you are mixing. You are mixing. You are mixing when you got another in your spirit. And this another comes from all from moving away from the simplicity in Christ. Well, I just feel like I need to read the Quran and I need to read the Apocrypha and I need to read this ancient book and that ancient book. And I just feel like I need incense and juju and crystals. I need something more to my Jesus. You got another Jesus then, sir, ma'am. I just feel like I gotta put a little business principles in there and, and you know and and, 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 and and we need to be wealthy in order to be believers and we need you gotta you're preaching another Jesus preacher. Come on and get it in your spirit. You are giving the people another Jesus. Well, you know, it's all it's it's okay if you you know It's okay if you, the Lord understands your sin, you're preaching another Jesus. The Lord understands we're human, you know, and, and he understands sometimes you are preaching another spirit. You are preaching another gospel. You are preaching another Jesus. The Lord does not understand sin. That's why, especially the Father, and he doesn't tolerate it. That's why he provided the Lord Jesus. He's not cushioning our sin. He is not making excuses for our sin. He is not, but in his divine wisdom and love, he has provided for us to be cleansed from our sin. Come on, the prophet Isaiah, the Lord says, come apart with me, come aside with me, and let us reason together. Though your sins be a scar, I will wash you and make you whiter than snow. I'm trying to keep the preacher on the bench so I can continue to teach, but I'm telling you, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. The Lord, the Father does not understand our sin. The Lord Jesus Christ is not understanding our sin, condoning our sin. And I hear some of you coming down the street. Well, why does the scripture say, Bishop, that the Lord can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities? He can be touched with it. He, it doesn't say he excused it. It doesn't say he's going to tolerate it. Bishop, I don't believe that. Go to Revelation 6, and you're not going to see the wrath of the Father. You're going to see the wrath of the Lamb. Because who's opening the seven seals? Who's loosing the seven seals? The Apostle John tells you right there, no man was worthy to do it. Come on, he's telling you right there in 5 and 6. No man was worthy to do it. Chapter 5 and chapter 6, he is telling you, no man was worthy to loose these seals. Okay, no man. So what are you concerning yourself with? What are you really saying? See, we're always trying to see how far we can slide close to the line of non-sanctification. No, we got to go far away from that non-sanctification line, so deep into progressive sanctification, that we end up, as Psalms 1 says, being like trees planted by the rivers of living water. But oh no, many of us, we're trying to see how close we can skirt the line. There is no, the line of demarcation is the true gospel, the true Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Christ and his true spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, that the Father promised he would give to us when the Son ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts to men, some apostles, some prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry in every generation. Away with this and flush this spirit down the toilet that there are no, that when the 12 apostles went out, there were no more apostles because there were more than 12. You didn't read Acts forensically. Barnabas was called an apostle. Silas was called an apostle. The apostles simply meant uh, ones that were sent forth. It was not a title. It was a, a realization of their spiritual character and nature in Christ and the mission that they have been called to. Get it down in your spirit because many of you are preaching from another spirit, preaching another gospel, and preaching another Jesus, and we're high time sick of it. Flush it down the toilet, repent, and get in the firepower and the true spirit of the Lord, the true gospel of the Lord, and get in to the true uh, 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 Jesus that we preach, and not the one you want to preach. He's not this pink fluffy slipper, pink robe, tiptoeing through the tulips, Jesus. He's the line of the tribe of Judah. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world in his first coming. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah that will loose the seven seals of the wrath of the Lord, followed by the trumpets, followed by the vials in the earth realm on the wicked Gentiles, wicked Jews, and wickedness overall, Satan and his forces. Come on and get it down in your spirit. I'm telling you, I'm trying to keep the preacher on the bench, but it's getting tougher because it's like fire shut up in my bones. I'm going, Rabbi, Sake te le robo, Sanchibo, Kide me se te le mahante, go robo, I'm telling you right now, because many of you are preaching it out of another spirit, another Jesus. You're talking to your family members. Oh, it's okay. I do a little Ouija board here and there. I play the horoscope. Wrong. I, I'm, a, I, you know, I, I believe in a little astrology. I go down to the psycho. You can have a little psychic in there. You can put a little lottery in there. You wrong, 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 wrong answer. You got another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, and the Lord is commanding you, all men everywhere to repent of this foolishness and flush it down the toilet and get the true Lord Jesus Christ in your heart before you go to the lake of fire where there will be no exodus. Catholics, there is no purgatory. It's not scriptural. Get it in your spirit. Purgatory is another gospel. It's another spirit. Yeah, it's a, it's a spirit, but it's not a holy spirit. Antichrist is an anti-spirit. Antichrist is a spirit. Bishop, I don't believe that. Pick up the Apostle John's first epistle. Antichrist is a spirit, and we're going to see it in a minute. We have to consider the source. When you talk about preaching another Jesus, we got to consider the source. You have another Jesus that's coming by an antichrist spirit that's going to cause you to give another gospel. Gospel meaning word, message. You don't have to be a preacher to give a message. Apostates give messages. Politicians get messages. Uh, statesmen get messages. Kings and queens get messages. Teachers get messages of all levels. Come on and let's get it down our spirit. Family members give you messages. Bishop, I don't believe that. Yes, you do. Because many of you are still suffering from the messages they gave you because they were of the Antichrist spirit. They were of another Jesus. They were not of this one. And if you grew up in a household like I did, let me tell you right now. You know how many people read their Bibles and then do the most devilish stuff? That's because they got another Jesus. They believe they can work Satan's power and work in the Lord's power at the same time, and it does not exist. It does not exist. Satan's power and the Lord's power can't exist in the same time and space. When the Lord comes, many of you talk about, can a believer be demonically possessed? Yes, but if he is demonically possessed, he is thoroughly demonically possessed. There is no Holy Ghost. Was there a Holy Ghost in the gathering demoniac? Y'all are crazy with these principles, especially some of you deliverance ministers. Oh, a believer can't be demonically possessed. Yes, they can, but when they are, are they still a believer? An active one? Demonically possessed means your faculties have been taken over. Demonic possession. Demons don't leave you in control of your faculties. Come on and get it down in your spirit. There's a difference. See, many of you don't understand. There's a difference between being demonically possessed and being demonically influenced according to Ephesians 2. Demonic influence means Satan speaks to the mind. His forces speak to the mind. It does not mean that they have control of it. Demonic possession means they've taken control. They need to be cast out. But when they have influence, they need to be cast away. And the preaching of the gospel casts demons out and away. 
everybody can a de can a can a believer be demonically influenced? Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Say what the scriptures say, not what you want to say. Because you're da slipping dangerously close, many of you deliverance ministers. You and, and listen, I don't have a problem with the term. Many of you say it's not scriptural. The principle's in there. The, the exact coining of the phrase is not. But the principle's in there. I don't have a problem with you calling yourself that. Like many of these others who don't study the scriptures careful enough and don't have a revelation. I said it. Not scared of none of you. But listen to me carefully. Listen to the Holy Ghost carefully and what is being said here. Understand there's a difference between casting out, casting away. Demonically possessed requires casting out. Demonically influenced requires casting away. A believer cannot be demonically possessed. The Holy Ghost will stand aloof. Why? Because he has to lift up a standard to drive the demons out. That's why you're there, deliverance minister, but a, de but a believer can be demonically influenced. Where he's hearing both the voice of the Lord and the voice of Satan, this is what makes the word of the Lord true in the prophet Isaiah when he says, when this enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. No, a believer cannot be demonically possessed and filled with the spirit of God at the same time. Why? Because you have to consider the message proceeding out of the man's mouth. If you're demonically possessed, your word is going to be mixed. It's not the Lord Jesus then. It's another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. I don't know why we're tripping over this, and with the exception, and I'm not questioning nobody's salvation, but I am questioning your revelation in the Holy Ghost. You cannot be demonically possessed, because wherever light comes in, it drives out darkness. How can you two can occupy the same space at the same time? That's not even, that's not, uh, that's not correct in, from a physics point of view. From a scientific point of view. We don't even, before we even get to the Holy Ghost, that's not even correct by natural standards. Come on and get it in your spirit. Come on and get it in your spirit. And I know some of you can say, well, you know, sometimes the moon and sometimes, you know, we get light and die. It's that, that's not, that's not the original design. The Lord created the sun, come on Genesis, that, that star to rule the day, and the moon, that star to rule the night. He makes a separation. Our God is a God of separation. Much of the phenomenon we're seeing in the world is because the day of the Lord is approaching, a day of wrath. So these blood moons and all this stuff, it is prophesied because of wrath. Light and dark occupy wrath. Because, and what's causing that is the sin iniquity of the world rising to measure. That's what the Lord told Father Abraham that would be about Egypt in the days when Israel, when Israel would be slaves there 400 years in Egypt. He says the cup of Egypt's iniquity hasn't filled up yet. But in that time it will, and I will call my people out. I'm just going to use Egypt as an incubator, but I will call my people out, bless them for the 400 years, and establish them in a, in a new land formed with milk and honey. If you understand the conversation between Father Abraham, see the word was already for, forever settled in heaven. That's why the father could speak to Father Abraham and tell him, your people are going into captivity, sir. Come on. They're going to serve. 400 years, he told them. He said, and then I will judge, but not yet, because the cup of their iniquity isn't full. Then you go to Revelation 18, the New Testament version, and you see that, that Babylon's cup of iniquity is filled up to devil, and the Lord says to the holy angels who are getting ready to pour wrath out, he says, give her commensurate to her sin. Her sin is double, give her a double portion of wrath. Come on, we got to get deeper revelation and penetrate the revelation of the Holy Ghost deeper. And many of you talking about, well, you know, the rap show me rapture in the Bible. Show me where it's ordained for women to preach in the Bible. There's a lot of stuff in your Bible that's by revelation. You're not saying anything, all of you preachers. And most of you are monotheistic. And many of you need to flush your nonsense down the toilet. I said it. I ain't scared of none of you. Come on and get it in your spirit. The Bible is not just by the words written on the page. It's by revelation. You have to penetrate between the words of the between the lines of the word. Our first lady says it here all the time. You gotta penetrate between the words on the lines. You gotta penetrate between the lines to the deeper revelation. The Bible is not just by the written word plainly. It's also by revelation. Get it in your spirit. Matter of fact, you can't even understand the Bible until you get revelation of it. What are you people talking about? You're crazy. 
You're preaching another Jesus from another spirit, and you're you got another gospel because you're mixing the simplicity that's in Christ. The Bible is not just by the plain written word; it's by revelation. If it was only by the plain written word, heathens could get it. And we know this not to be true. Then what is the point of the Spirit of the Lord by revelation and the Spirit of faith the Apostle Paul preaches, which allows us to understand times that we were not living in, like the one Jesus when he came. You need the Spirit of faith to know you weren't there when Jesus was there. It's nonsense. It's crazy. It's another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. You were not there. You're receiving it by the spirit of faith, by the Holy Ghost. So all of you defending your measure, oh, if it's not plainly written in Scripture, it doesn't count. Liars. That's a lying antichrist spirit. The Bible is by revelation primarily first and foremost. Did you understand the Bible like you do now before you came to the Holy Ghost? No. Then what are you talking about? Come on, you're in another spirit. You done slipped off the deep end. And I'm going to tell you, most of you that are holding, espousing this doctrine is because you got it from a man. You are bringing to pass Isaiah 29 that, you, that your fear is taught to you by men. Mine was taught to me by the Holy Ghost. Get it down in your spirit. I'm telling you, I feel like jumping out this window now. Mine wasn't taught to me by men, but by revelation of the Holy Ghost. Get it in your spirit. We got to consider the source here. Let's go to Daniel the 8th chapter and the 23rd verse. We actually went over the scripture in the IPBS yesterday. But the Holy Ghost wanted it for Sunday too. Come on. Scripture is powerful. Daniel the 8th chapter. Let's go. We're going to start at the 23rd verse. Read to 25. Daniel 8. Right after Ezekiel, my new believers. Daniel 8. And in the latter time of their kingdom, verse 23... Daniel 8, for those of you just joined or will be viewing this broadcast in the future. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, that means they have all, they're all in play. Okay? He's talking about the nations of the world. He's talking about everybody who is wicked, who is going to serve the Antichrist. When that cup fills up, he says a king. Talking about the beast of Revelation, the Antichrist now. <coughs> A king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. What is dark sentences? Another gospel from another spirit. And this is the Antichrist, which is clearly another Jesus. So what is the Apostle Paul saying? Consider your source. You have another Jesus if you are mixing your faith because you've entered the anti-holy realm, uh, which is the realm of the Antichrist, which is the, an anti-spirit, which is the realm of the demonic. Come on. Let's get revelation in the Holy Ghost and his power shall be mighty. But not by his own power. Then whose power is it? This is an instance, all you preachers. Oh, it's got to be plainly written to be accepted. Then what is this talking about right here? Because it's not plain and clear. It's by revelation. But not by the Antichrist power means Satan is his power. Satan is the spirit operating through him. The Antichrist. This is by revelation. So I'm glad the Holy Ghost led us here so you can see this is not plainly written when it says, and but not by his own power. That's why many of you got to go get your other translations because you don't know. And even when you get those many, you still don't know what it's talking about because this is by revelation, preachers. I'm telling you right now, flush it down the toilet. But not by his own power. Whose power is it? Satan's power. And you can know that by Revelation the 12th and the 13th chapter. Get it in your spirit. Because you have to synthesize the whole Bible to understand. And even doing that, you need revelation on how to do that. And the correct manner to divide it so you're not arriving at the wrong interpretation. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. How? In an apostate church through the false prophet. And his dead spirit is working right now making an apostate church. So many of you, you're tripping in your mind. What is going on? What is going on? There's a reality of two churches. I got in trouble in my second church for preaching this. 
We're not one and the same. The body of Christ, General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn here in the earth is not the same as the apostate church. The apostate church are backsliders that have slid back from the principles of the word of God preaching another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. Verse 25, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper. That's interesting to his policy. His policy. His politics. All you evangelicals with your right and left spirit, it's another spirit, another gospel, another Jesus you have. <clears throat> he says, love your enemies. You're over there hating them. Don't lie. You can't lie to the Holy Ghost. You can lie to us. You can't lie to the spirit of the Lord in us. You got another Jesus, many of you evangelicals with your right and left brains and spirits. You got another spirit, therefore you're speaking another gospel to your family, to your friends, to your churches. And your pastors are doing the same thing. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Notice that. Notice that. By peace. Another portion of the scripture says, they're crying peace, peace, and then suddenly destruction. Another portion says they're crying peace when there is no peace. Come on. Read Jeremiah 20, the 23rd chapter. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Or another portion of scripture says broken without remedy. Why is he broken without hand? That's not clear either, all of you preachers, which are, if it's not written, it don't count. Because Revelation tells us that it's it, that the Lord destroys the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming and the word proceeding out of his mouth. Not with physical weapons of war. His hand. It's my revelation. Because even though both of that's in the scripture, without the revelation of the Holy Ghost, you won't make the connection. Don't tell me everything in the word of God is explicitly written. It's not. So the rapture counts. Women preaching the word of God counts. Bishop, it's not explicitly that they're ordained to preach. Let me tell you something. Show me where it's explicitly written using the word ordained that men are ordained to preach. Well, Jesus called. That's by revelation. Many of you are talking about 12 apostles. Judas fell from transgression, and you didn't make the connection that Apostle Peter is speaking from an Old Testament scripture. Let his bishop be taken and given it to another. And many of you are arguing, well, Matthias wasn't a true apostle. Yes, he was. Because the Old Testament said Judas would fall by lot, and his bishop would need to be given to another king. It was prophesied through King David, who didn't even live in the time of the apostles. Come on and get it in your spirit. Y'all y'all are preaching another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. But you're not going to do it on my watch, at least not without me saying something and coming against it. Let's go. Listen, because let me explain this. Uh, grab First John, the fourth chapter, first of all. Autonomous idolatry is what we're seeing today in this apostate church. And many of you are falling away from the true church in it. Ito uh, autonomous idolatry is the worst form. It's, it simply is a theological statement to express how you're becoming your own God. Because you're mixing your faith. Because you got another Jesus because of it. And another spirit, another gospel. Because you're mixing your faith and your faith's not pure. You're coming up with your own revelation instead of letting the Holy Ghost teach you and speak to you correct revelation and give you the revelation you need. 1 John the 4th chapter. 1 John 4. New believers, you got John Jude Revelation. You get to Revelation, go to Revelation, back up two books. Matter of fact, three, because you got 2 John, 3 John, then you get to 1 John. Just back up. Revelation, back to Jude, back to 3 John, back to 2 John, then you reach 1 John. 1 John, the fourth chapter. First six verses. We're considering the source here. Daniel gives us the source of the Antichrist power. And the spirit of Antichrist we're reading about right here. So we're going to get the source of the power right here. Beloved, verse 1. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they have God. That's why I don't mind you all trying my spirit and trying the word that I preach. You're going to see it's the true Jesus, the true spirit of the gospel, and the true gospel. That's why I don't mind folks checking me. Check all you want. I am clear I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost and in the spirit of the Lord. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This instruction is clear. Come on. This is plainly written. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus come in the flesh is of God.
clear as day. Now, why does he even say that? Because the first century church, right up to this modern day, but especially back in those earlier centuries, even in the first century church, they were dealing with an with an Arian heresy where people were saying God was partly human, God was half human and half uh, uh, God. That's demigod. The theological term for that is it's that Jesus is a demigod. And there are still people that hold that doctrine today of Arianism. See, we understand the principle, we don't understand the names, and that's how Satan gets many of us. Jesus is not a demigod. He is fully God and he is fully human. He's not a demigod. Nor is he uh, uh, an exempt. Nor is he. Um, uh, there's another heresy that says that that Jesus only appeared to suffer on the cross because he's fully God and he wasn't in in true humanity. He only appeared to suffer on the cross. Wrong. Because Isaiah says he saw the travail of his soul and was satisfied. Your soul doesn't travail if the suffering is fake or perceived or non-real. Your soul is in travail when they're whooping you with a cat of nine tails and putting crowns of thorns on you and spitting on you and mocking you and calling you king of the worms and all the rest of this stuff. And I'm not going to stay too far there or I'll start crying on this broadcast. Because thinking about the Lord on that cross in place of me always messes me up. So I got to finish teaching, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone by permission of the Holy Ghost. Listen, verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Which comes by mixing your faith. That's why he tells you to test the spirit so you don't mix. So you have a purity of faith. So Because once you mix, you have another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Does it get any plainer? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? By the Spirit of God and the power of His Word. Because greater is He that's in you. There it is. He that's in you, Baptist. He that's in you, Methodist. He that's in you, Presbyterian. We're in the dispensation of grace. We're in the New Covenant. The New Testament, the Old Covenant, the Holy Ghost can come upon you. He can be with you. He can speak to you. In the New Covenant, He has to be in you. Get it in your spirit. Flush that nonsense down the toilet. You got another Jesus and another spirit and you got another gospel. And you're leading people to hell with it. And you're going to go yourself. So I'm preaching you out of it. Because greater is he that is where? In you. Dwelling. You say, oh, Holy Ghost was put in there. That's man-made. No, it's not. Spirits come to you. Ghosts abide. They dwell. They, they hover in a place. Holy Ghost is just a theological symbol that states that the Holy Ghost comes in the believer to dwell. He does not leave unless you make him leave by grieving him or by renouncing him. He can if you renounce him. He can if you continue to grieve him. And he has to keep striving against you because you won't obey. Come on, that ought to convict everybody in the body of Christ right there to make sure that we're not grieving the Holy Ghost. I'm, he's talking to me right now. That's why we need progressive sanctification. That's why we need him to continue to work in us. So that we will obey. But let's yield willingly. I will. How about you? They are of the world. He says, you, uh, he says uh, they are of the world, verse 5. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. That's another Jesus. That's another spirit. That's another gospel. You got all these secular artists talking about, well, I believe in Jesus. I believe. They got another Jesus because they don't obey him. The Lord, Bishop, how do you know? Because the Lord said, those that obey me do two things. They keep my commandments. They do my commandments and they keep my word. He said, those are the ones that love me. These worldly artists don't keep his commandments. One minute Jesus is on their lips, the next minute booze is on it. One minute Jesus is on their lips, the next minute they're cussing. One minute they're, and this apostate church is the same way because they're friends of the world. And friendship with the world, the word of the Lord says, is enmity against God. You can't have the spirit of the world which is the spirit of Antichrist, and have the spirit of God. They don't dwell in the same place. So no, they can't be a believer, de deliverance ministers. 
Those two spirits cannot fully occupy a believer. One has to go. When the enemy comes in like a flood on the believer, the spirit of the Lord drives it out. It can't stay. Get it in your spirit. I don't know what's wrong with you all, except you're in another spirit. But we're going to cast it out in King Jesus' name. Some of you deliverance ministers need deliverance. Not that you're demon-possessed, but you're certainly demonically influenced. You need, a, you need a casting away then. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. But the Lord said, my sheep know my voice. You got another Jesus. I don't care that you mention his name. If you don't obey him and you don't keep his commandments and do his word, as we read in James, then you got another Jesus. You got another spirit and you got another gospel. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and what? Say it to yourself. Read it out loud to yourself right where you are. The spirit of error. There are two spirits operating. The apostate church operating in the spirit of error. Backsliding. Apostasy. Apostasy. Spirit of error. Spirit of antichrist. Same spirit. Then there's the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. Those that worship God must worship in the spirit and in truth. Spirit, capital S, Holy Ghost, being in your spirit. Come on, we're mixing, we're mixing, and when we mix, we enter the anti-holy realm and the realm of the demonic. We have to consider the source of our preaching, the source of the spirit coming out of our mouth, the source of the gospel that's coming out. And it's not just in the pulpit, because I tell young preachers all the time, 95% of ministering is out of the pulpit, only 5% of it's in. So we're taking the world to our, we're taking the word and the spirit into our homes and the gospel into our homes and into the world. What are you taking? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you on this morning for the power of your word, for the presence of your Holy Ghost, that we have the true Lord Jesus. We have your true spirit and your true gospel coming forth in Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, a house of watchmen that are not going to be, that are not going to let the stork who knows her, her appointed times and the turtles crane and swallow who observe the times of their coming. But your word says, my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Father, we know your judgment and we're not going to let the stork, the turtle crane and the swallow outdo us. We know your judgment. We are a house of watchmen and we are on our post. We are crying loud and sparing not. May your people hear you. May the world hear you. May the international community hear you. May everyone, may this world Word, get out to every ethnicity all over the world, Father. May this word go forth. Father, if it saves one soul, it was worth all of the, the decades of I've been preaching and the many that will come should you tarry in the rapture. Have you, We thank you for having your way in this worship service on this morning. Father, we are not going to preach another Jesus, but we're going to stand in the firepower of your spirit. We're going to preach the true Lord Jesus and the true gospel by the true Holy Ghost spirit that should be in every human being on the face of this planet. And we're going to preach until it is such or until the wicked uh, law hell because hell is enlarging herself to receive the wicked and your word says the wicked shall be turned into hell in every nation that forgets you and so we're going to preach till they either accept you or they go in the lake of fire but we're going to get your business done father we're not going to return to you void because your word will not return to you void your servants are going to make good on the investment of the talents that you placed in us that you might commend us when you say Sir, well done thou good and faithful servants entered the rest that has been prepared for you And so, Father, we bless you on this morning for your true spirit being in our spirit, your true gospel being in our mouths, and the true Lord Jesus being our King and our Master. May someone hear this word today, be convicted and be changed and repent and begin to walk out the true Lord Jesus by the Holy Ghost with the true word and true message of the kingdom in their mouths as ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, help your children to stand strong in this day. Help us to speak your uh, a word with all boldness and declaration of the power of the Holy Ghost. That the world might hear, that we might be the light and salt you called us to be. And they might come out of darkness and into this marvelous light wherein we stand in righteousness. Father, on the remainder of the day, have your will. Let your will be done and have your way in us. If somebody needs you, Lord.
put us in their path or put them in our path and we'll be faithful to discharge your grace and your mercy to them as ambassadors for your kingdom and in your kingdom. We are your sons and your daughters. We are the true light. We are the salt of the earth. Lord, help us to overtake this apostate church and marginalize it that all men might know that the true Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah is alive and well seated at your right hand to his enemies be made his footstool whereby he will turn when the kingdom up place the kingdom up to you where you may have the preeminence and as your word says that you will be all in all father we honor you on this morning we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise and we magnify you and certainly we love you because you first loved us in king jesus name we thank you and we bless you father Amen and amen. All right, saints, all I have time for in our Sunday morning worship gathering. This video is going to be up for you shortly. It's all on YouTube. It's already, already when I when I conclude here, it'll be up on our Facebook ministry page. For those of you that missed any portion of it, my team will work diligently put it up on YouTube with all the nice scriptures and everything with it. They'll work on that. And so... Uh, we just bless the word of the Lord and we just honor the spirit of the Lord. On this, I'm sorry, our Sunday morning worship gathering the scripture is not on it. That's our online series. Uh, but the message will be up there for you, and you can follow along with the scriptures because you can certainly hit the pause button and the rewind button and the fast forward button. But we thank the Lord for all of you, any of my, all of you who spent any amount of time with us in worship this morning. Please receive the engrafted word which is able to make your souls new. Unbeliever, please receive the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you that are far and estranged from him, come in now while you have a chance. We're warning you, time is short. We're not in the last days now. Now, when the last hour is approaching the last minutes of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive him while you can. You take your last breath, you don't have him, you're going to an eternal lake of fire. So I warn you now, receive him now. Some are saved, we save with compassion, others we save by snatching them out of the fire. And in your Greek text, that is the word rapture, all you non-rapturists. In the Greek, it's harpazo, Latin, rapturo. In the old English, rapture. In the modern English, to be caught up. How shall they escape? Okay? And there are other phrases in the Bible that refer, that are in the Greek harpazo, to be raptured. This statement is one of them, all right? Get it in your spirit. The rapture, stop telling people there's no rapture. There is. And it is a premillennial rapture. Get it in your spirit. Because if it's not, then you tell me what closes out the 69 week of Daniel, which constitutes the majority of the fullness of the times, uh, or I'm sorry, the, time, the uh, times of the Gentiles, or, or that large measure of the times of the Gentiles in the 69 week, and institutes the 70th week, or opens it up. You tell me what event closes one out and opens the 70th week of Daniel if there's no rapture. All you smarties that think you're smarter than the Holy Ghost. I'm not against you. I just want to let the Holy Ghost talk to you and convict your heart, many of you, so you can stop preaching this nonsense. All right? And I'm saying this out of truth. I'm saying this in truth and out of divine love for you. Because many of you are going to stand before the Bema seat and lose reward over this. You won't lose your soul, but you're going to lose your reward. And I don't want you to do that because they're critical for, for the work that we'll do in the millennial reign of Christ here on earth when we come back. When the Lord comes back with 10,000 of his saints as the prophet Enoch uh, prophesied. All right? Come on and get it down in your spirit. The word of the Lord is good. It's deep. It's revelatory. And we need it. All right? That's all I have time for. I love all of you because I tell you the unadulterated truth straight with no chaser, non-watered down, non-filtered. We love you in the Lord. Any of you need any of my new believers you need anything reach out to us the church number is on all of our um uh platforms just reach out many of you friends if you need anything reach out on messenger all right all right i love you all i'm gonna bid you all a good day for now